Hi, and welcome everyone to Ruin Hammers Weekly NRL Round Review. This week, we're going to take a quick look at the results from Round 24. Before we get started, I invite you all to like and subscribe to the YouTube channel to show your support for the content we create. Uh, subscribing to the channel puts you in the draw to win some exclusive Ruin Hammer merchandise, so click that subscribe button now. Rob, Round 24, mate. Let's jump in and have a look. Yep, straight into it. Round 24 kicked off on Thursday night at Four Pines Park on the Northern Peninsula. And that was with Manly hosting the Penrith Panthers. And the reigning premiers took a huge step towards their third minor premiership in four years with a 24-12 win over the Sea Eagles. And it was Panthers 24, Crichton with a double to Ruba and to all tries. Cleary 4 from 5. And Eagles 12, Sipley and Garrick tries. Garrick 2 from 2. Defending champs are riding a seven-game winning streak as they head into games against the Titans, Eels and Cowboys um, to round out another dominant season. After a Josh Schuster intercept um, had threatened to give Manly the perfect start, geez, that was that was diabolical from Josh Schuster, it must be said. <laughs> it's like he just don't gave know. up completely and just put in a kick. Don't, it was one of the most what ridiculous thinking. things I've seen. It was, yep. wasn't it? Eh? Yeah. <laughs> Just sums, sums him up on the TB122, I think, set uphill. Um, yeah. But, yeah, he threatened – that was threatening early. And then Stephen Crichton, he returned the favour, showed him how it's done, actually took the intercept <laughs> in the eighth minute, uh, snaffled the daily Cherry Evans pass and raced 70 metres, grabbed the opening try, then tries to toff Sipley and Ruben Garrick, had the home side ahead um, before the Panthers levelled up just before half time. Crichton got his second try. However, the ref seemed to have missed a Liam Martin uh, knock-on on the lead-up. Hmm. Anyway, the Panthers, they extended their lead in the 47th minute when Edwards and Crichton combined to send um, to Ruva on a long run to the line after Garrick had bizarrely um, kicked the ball back to the Premiers after receiving on his own 20-metre line from a clear kick. I think he thought the kicking duel was back. Yeah, so did I. Yeah. I think Vossi got excited too. He thought it was back he, too. He, he did, and uh, the gesture was not returned. <laughs> Instead, no. they scored a try out of it. Um, mm. Interesting. The Panthers, though, they sealed the victory in the 64th minute. Brian Toto, he scored out wide. And from there, with Cleary in total control, the outside backs all making huge metres. The Panthers always had the game under control, despite Manly throwing the ball around and asking plenty of questions. Yeah, I just want to give a shout, a huge shout out to my mate and former teammate at uh, St. Pat's Blackdown, uh, Chris Summerton, whose son Luke made his first grade debut for the Panthers in Thursday night's game. A massive achievement for young Luke and an extremely proud moment for Chris, who was a pretty handy player himself. Did play hooker as well, a little bit of halfback. Um, so yeah, great to see uh, Luke get his opportunity. Uh, well mate, done. two games on Friday night footy with the first played at Points Bet Stadium with the Sharks hosting the Titans, uh, Sharks legend Wade Graham celebrating his uh, 250th club game. It was actually his 250th, uh, 51st club game, but uh, being at home, they, they did all the pomp and ceremony for him. Uh, did that in front of all the Sharks fans, and, and he celebrated in style. He did with a convincing 36-6 victory by the Sharks. Uh, for the Sharks, uh, their 36 points came from a double to your mate, Pre-Jack Molotalo. Uh, Connor Tracy, Cam McInnes, Wade Graham, Toby Rudolph, Jesse Ramian all scored tries. Nico Hines, four from seven goals. For the Titans, it was Big Tino, uh, their sole try scorer. Uh, and Tanner Boyd, uh, one goal from one attempt, I think it was. Um, yes. Mate, the Sharks uh, are a step closer to sealing a finals berth following that comprehensive seven try showing. Uh, with 5'8", Braden Trindle and Hooker Blake, Blake, Blake Brayley pulling the sp strings between them, uh, setting up three tries directly. The Sharks proved too much for the Titans, and they lost uh, the, the Titans lost veteran playmaker Kieran Four into a rib injury at halftime. A first half double to Prejack Mulatalo helped the host to a 20 to 6 lead at the break, and from there the home side ran in a further three tries to claim the two competition points. Crucially, uh, they also significantly boosted their for and against in the process, which could be a big factor at, uh, coming in at the end of the season. And after celebrating his 250th game for the club, uh, club last week, Wade Graham, he got himself a four-point uh, try four minutes into the second half to seal a memorable night for the veteran. Yeah, I guess you could say that victory is Cronulla doing what they do best this season, punishing little guys. Um, yep. but yeah, yeah, sitting on 294 games and announcing his retirement at the end of the season. Um, Cronulla, I need to get a, I need to go and are going to need to go deep into the finals uh, for Graham to reach that 300-game milestone. 
Uh, the second yeah, of the were. Friday night games, that was the Broncos uh, at their home, away from home, the Gabba, which is literally just down the road from Suncorp, um, <laughs> <Yeah>. hosting, <laughs> for those out of, out of town, um, hosting the Parramatta Eels and the return of Adam Reynolds uh, for the Broncos and Payne Haas playing his milestone 100th game. And it was a statement game from the Broncos, a dominant 54 to 10 win. And the Eels' hopes of playing finals footy in 2023 all but gone. Broncos, 54. Mariner with a double. Walters with a double. Reynolds, Farmworth, Mam, Capewell, Walsh tries. Reynolds, 9 from 10. For the Eels, Russell and Brown tries. Gutherson, 1 from 2. And it was a night at the Gabba, which couldn't have gone much worse for last year's beaten grand finalists, who now face the final rounds of the season without their representative half, Mitchell Moses. Moses suffered a suspected facial fracture in the first half and failed to play any more minutes in the second half. Adam Davey, uh, Andrew Davey, sorry, also didn't play beyond the 46th minute after failing a HIA. Excuse me. Brisbane, on the other hand, though, they were all smiles after arguably their best performance of the year and they now head into the bye. What a luxury to have a bye now. Uh, they're around 25 with their pursuit of a minor premiership well and truly alive. A stunning piece of work from Reese Walsh and Kate Kirkwell, uh, Kurt Capewell down the short side, um, which resulted in Adams Reynolds' try. That set the tone for the for the night early on. In the next 20 minutes, Brisbane scored three more tries and they led 24 to nil at the break. The home side simply couldn't put a foot wrong and retained possession by overturning an on-field call with the captain's challenge. And they sent Mariner flying over for his second early in the in the second half. Interesting point about uh, Dean Mariner. His old man sung the It's a Matter of Faith song for the Warriors back in 2003. Yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> Interesting. Um, yeah, so Ezra Mam, he then jumped on the uh, Kate, Kurt Capewell offload and danced over before Walters supported up the middle, grabbed an infield kick, secured his first career double. And the 44-point victory was the Broncos' biggest win of the season and fifth time in 2023 that they've scored 40-plus points in a game. Selwyn Cobbo, he did go on report for a dangerous tackle on Jermaine Hopgood. Uh, he was also cited for a dangerous tackle 10 minutes earlier. And Wittaramu Greg uh, put on report the 44th minute for a grapple. Adam Reynolds' eighth and final goal of the night saw him notch up 1,000 uh, career goals. Only second player in NRL history to do so. His 22 points for the game helped by a try. Uh, was just short of Lottie Takiri. Uh, his single um, game record for the Broncos of 26 points. Lottie Takiri, who was notoriously a terrible goal kicker, yeah, um, must have got a few that night. Yeah, I think he scored th three tries that night when he got that 26 points, Lottie Takiri, or a double or something like that. Yeah, and but yeah, Adam Reynolds. 12. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Adam Reynolds, he's, he's been a great buy yeah. for the Broncos. And yeah, congratulations to him. Uh, for that 1,000 career goals. Only the second player, as you said, to do so after the great Cam Smith. Uh, we move on to Super Saturday, mate. Super Saturday kicked off at Barlaw Park in Cairns with the Rabbits on that road trip from hell, taking a home game to Cairns against the Dragons. And it was the Rabbits who did enough uh, in the end to get the result over the Dragons. The Rabbits, 26. Alex Johnston, 2. Graham Walker tries. Mitchell... Uh, Latrell Mitchell, five from five goals for the Dragons, uh, 14. Ravalawa, Hunt, Sloan tries. Ben Hunt, just one from three goals. Uh, a double to try scoring machine. Alex Johnston helped the Rabbits to an unconvincing 26-14 uh, win over the Dragons. Johnston now has 21 tries for the season and 187 for his career. He's just 25 behind the game's all-time lead try scorer, Ken Irvine, on 212. And, Amazing. I mean, Alex Johnston scored, yeah, he scored 30 tries the past two seasons. He's on 21 now. You'd have to assume with three games left, he's going to pick up a couple more and he may get that record next year. Um, it's mm, um, looking just, like it. Yeah. Uh, he, Johnson, he, he opened the scoring by finishing off some slick passing from Cameron Murray, uh, Cody Walker and Latrell Mitchell. Uh, when Tyrell Sloan put a line dropout out in the full in the 18th minute, the Rabbits took the chance to take the lead 8-0 with a Mitchell penalty goal. Uh, the Rabbits then came up with a blunder of their own when they let the kickoff go into touch and the Red V made them pay when Moses Sully Broke the line and found Ravalara in support for his 19th try of the season. Uh, South had a number of chances to extend their lead, but Mitchell came up with a forward pass and then a grubber kick that went dead as the red and green struggled to find any rhythm. Um, after the break, the Rabbits capitalised on a Matt Fegai error to score from the scrum base through Campbell Graham. A mistake by Saliva Havili straight from the kickoff proved disastrous 
uh, for South as a pinpoint grubber by Talatau Amon was snaffled by Ben Hunt. And the Dragons were back within four. And six minutes later, the Rabbits' big guns came out, uh, to the party when Mitchell flew high to pull a bomb, uh, pull down a bomb before delivering a magical offload for Cody Walker to score. And with 14 minutes to play, the Dragons turned up the heat with a try to Sloan from a pinpoint grub, uh, hunt grubber. But a long-range try from the Rabbits in the 72nd minute proved the killer blow as Johnston handled twice in the movement before dotting down for his second of the day. Uh, interestingly enough, Matt and Max Figai and Ryan and Toby Couchman made history by becoming the first two sets of twins to appear in the same NRL game and did it at the same club as well. Yeah, as, as I said to you on Saturday, I'm never going to get that 80 minutes of my life back. Um, that's one of the most unconvincing wins I've ever seen, a bludger of a game that... Uh, the Rabbitohs just had enough to get over the Dragons there. Um, mm. Yes. So the second for Super Saturday uh, saw the West Tigers take their home game against the Warriors <laughs> Hamilton, New Zealand, as a thank you to the Warriors for the three-year sacrifice during COVID. And it was the Warriors who came away with an ugly win and also some silverware. As we see there, we have retained the Mike Doreen Cup for the third year in a row. So yep. it proudly sits in our trophy cabinet. All these people saying we haven't won any silverware. Jeez. I mean, fourth fourth yeah. year in a row. Fourth, fourth year, in, year a row, in a row, sorry. Yeah, 2020 it started. So, uh, yeah, in honour of the great Mike Doreen, the first player ever to play for the Warriors and the Tigers. Um, yeah. yeah, and we did, as we said, we came away with an ugly win, but, geez, the Tigers were definitely the better team in this contest. Uh, the Warriors, 30. Metcalf, Pompey, Watani, Zalesniak, Harris, and Fenua Blake tries. Johnson, two from two. Pompey, three from four. And the Tigers, 22. Toa, Brooks, and Laurie tries. Coruscant, three from four. Warriors are one step closer to sealing a spot in the finals after a scratchy 30-22 to 22 victory over the West Tigers on Saturday night. That made it five wins on the trot for the Kiwi Club. So after racing out to a 12-0 lead, the Warriors' defence uh, wilted on several occasions through the 80 minutes, including giving up 12 points in two minutes at one stage to leave Andrew Webster... The coach with plenty to ponder ahead of the Seagulls game in round 25. But to hear our full review, tune in to our live show this Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time where you can see that Mike Doreen Cup one more time. <laughs> Absolutely. Mate, the final Super Saturday game saw the Roosters at home at Allianz Stadium hosting Wayne Bennett's Dolphins. And it was the Roosters keeping their mathematical chances of playing semi-final football alive <laughs> with a 30-14 to 14 victory. Uh, the Roosters, 30. Hutchison, 2. Manu, Billy Smith, Swa'ali'i, tries. Swa'ali'i, 5 from 5 goals. Uh, the Dolphins, 14, came from Ray Stone, a Jermaine Asako, tries, and Asako, 3 from 3 goals. Um, and Sydney Roosters ensured Luke Curry was sent out a winner in his 200th NRL match with a dominant victory over the Dolphins at Allianz. A repeat of the season opener between the two sides appeared possible early as the Dolphins got out to an 8-0 lead before the Roosters switched on with five straight tries led by a double to halfback Drew Hutchison. Hutchison's efforts were equally matched by Kiri, who set up a try and played a hand in two more in a result that keeps the Roosters' finals uh, race with three rounds remaining. Roosters forward Dylan Napa made his return to the NRL in the 58th minute mm. after a two-year stint in the English Super League. Uh, Dolphins back row Connolly at Lemu Elu failed a head injury assessment in the 27th minute and did not return under Category 1 concussion protocols. He won't be named for this week. And the Dolphins also lost um, Kenny Bromwich to a failed head injury assessment as well. Dolphins winger Jermaine Asako has now scored 20 tries in 21 games this season. Uh, and the win by the Roosters were their, was their first back-to-back -back victory since April this year. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, Roosters fans have all got their calculators out trying to work out uh, what they need to do to mathematically get into the eight. But uh, yeah, yeah, so stranger things have happened, but yeah, unlikely. Yeah. Okay, Sunday footy kicked off with what was deemed the blockbuster game of the round um, with the Storm and the Raiders facing off at Amy Park. The winner taking that all-important fourth spot on the ladder. And geez, it was the Storm who were convincing winners, uh, securing fourth spot with a 48-2 to two victory. So the Storm 48 came from Welch, Seve, Smith, Katoa, Liero, Grant, Munster, Meany, and Tonomapia tries. Uh, Meany 6 from 8, and Tonomapia uh, failed with his only attempt. The Raiders 2 uh, came from a penalty goal from uh, Jamal Fogarty. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so the Storm have climbed back into the top four and made a big statement in the process following that stunning 48-2 victory over the Raiders. 
Star Trio, Hughes, Grant, and Munster controlling proceedings with an up tempo style of play. The Raiders could only manage two points to start the match via that penalty goal, uh, and the Storm ran in nine tries. The frustration ultimately got the better of the visitors when they went down to 11 men with Jordan Rapana and Matt Timoko sent to the sin bin in the final 10 minutes of the match, and that just summed up the afternoon for Ricky Stewart's men. While the Raiders usually find a way to get it done at Amy Park, having not lost to Melbourne on their home ground since 2018. Now, there's a stat. Um, 56 yep. missed tackles and 12 errors uh, made it a day forget, to forget for them as they slid further down the ladder into sixth uh, with a points differential of minus 20. Well, minus 120, I should say. Ethan Strange, he made his NRL debut for the Raiders at centre and came up with um, 80 run metres and two tackle breaks. And Storm fullback Nick Meany had a day out in the number one jersey with a try, two assists, 171 run metres and 10 tackle breaks. And it was announced during halftime of the game that Jared Croker will retire at the end of the season. He's been a great servant of the game and he has certainly had a wonderful career. Yeah, mate, he has. He's, he's, he's been a great servant of the game. He has had a wonderful career. 300-plus games, all for the Raiders, 135 career tries, 900-plus goals at over an 80% kicking. Uh, 18 tries against our Warriors, including three try doubles and two hat-tricks. He did love playing the Warriors, didn't he? <laughs> he did. He did, <laughs> indeed. I, I remember him uh, scoring a try against us in Golden Point to win as well. I remember he scored a hat-trick the day Sean Johnson scored a hat-trick in the loss. Uh, yeah, I mean, even, even when we beat them by 50 a couple of times, I think he's still got three tries for them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely amazing. Um, always good to see Ricky have a blow up at a press conference too, isn't yeah. it? Uh. <laughs> it's great. It's essential viewing. After Webby's press conference, I always go straight to uh, oh, it's sticky, Ricky's yeah. sticky session. Yeah, you're on your on yeah. sticky. Because you get one, you get, you get the, the zen and the calmness followed by uh, just the absolute uh, out of control garbage that is Ricky Stewart. Uh, yeah, yeah. Interestingly, this time though, he had to blame his own team. He couldn't blame the refs or the other team. He uh, he had to blame his own team in this one. <laughs> That's that is a rarity. Uh, it is. Um, interestingly enough, uh, Ethan Strange, who made his debut for the Raiders, um, his father is the coach of the Roosters women's side. Uh, and they were oh. playing at, at the same time. So John Strange didn't actually coach the Roosters that day. He went to Canberra to watch his son make his debut. And his daughter was playing for the Knights at the exact same time as well. She plays on the wing for the Knights in the uh, NRLW. So talented family, a, that strange uh, family. Absolutely. And what a strange conundrum. <laughs> uh, mate, the final game of round 24 saw the informed Knights at home at McDonald Jones Stadium taking on the Bulldogs. Uh, the Knights looking to keep their spot in the eight, top eight, uh, and they were dominant over the Bulldogs with a 42 to 6 victory. For the Knights, their 42 points came from a doubled Tyson Gamble, uh, Gagai, Marn, Twala, Thompson, Hetherington tries, while Jack got a try. Uh, Ponga, yeah. seven from eight goals for the Bulldogs, their lone try. Came uh, a dummy half scurry from Reed Marnie, Matt Burton one from one. And as I said, Newcastle, they moved a step closer to cementing their spot in the Telstra Premiership final by putting the Bulldogs to the sword with a crushing 42 to 6 victory. The Knights ran in five tries uh, for a 30 nil halftime lead before prop. Uh, Leo Thompson and Jack Hetherington kept things rolling in the second half. Uh, and who, they racked up a record-breaking 108 points in two games against the Bulldogs. It's the most ever by one club against another club in, in a season. Uh, it was an overall disaster afternoon for the visitors who were at one point down to 11 men when Harrison Edwards was sin-binned for a professional foul and Jacob Preston was sin-binned for a hip-drop tackle uh, within eight minutes of each other. Preston's tackle on Hastings forced the Knights halfback from the field with an ankle injury, uh, and that's the only concern for Adam O'Brien's side after securing their sixth straight victory. It's their best win streak since 2019. Uh, Knights prop Leo Thompson, he crossed for his first NRL try in his 37th game, while wild man Jack Hethering scored the first try of his season and the first try in Knights' colours. Uh Kalen Ponga earned a breather with 10 minutes remaining with the Knights fullback having a quieter than usual game, highlighting just how dominant the home side was across the board in the big win. Yeah, so after 24 rounds, the NRL ladder is looking a bit like this. So wins to the Panthers, Broncos and Warriors saw no change to the top of the table. The Panthers in first, Broncos in second, both on 38 points and the Warriors third on 34 points. 
The Storm, they move into fourth on the ladder on 32 points. And that's two points clear of the Sharks, who are in fifth, and the Raiders in sixth. Sixth, Both teams on 30 points there. But the Raiders, with that horrific minus 120 points differential, which could jeopardize a semifinal position in the coming weeks, with the ladder being so close. The Knights remain in seventh uh, with their win over the Bulldogs. They're on 29 points. With the Rabbits climbing back to eighth place with their win over the Dragons and the Cowboys in ninth. Both teams on 28 points. Eels are in 10th and the Roosters in 11th. Both teams on 26 points and still with a slim chance of playing finals football. So the remainder of the teams won't play finals footy. The Seagulls in 12th on 25 points. The Titans on 13th on 22. Dolphins in 14th also on 22. The Bulldogs in 15th on 20. The Dragons in 16th on 16 points. And the Tigers, who will claim their second consecutive wooden spoon in last pay place on 12 points. Yeah, ladder looks good. Okay, don't forget this week's live show will be uh, Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. Uh, Australian time, 9.30 p.m. New Zealand Standard Time, where we will review the Warriors' victory over the Tigers in the prestigious Mike Doreen Cup. Uh, and please, if you're a fan of our content, make sure you like and subscribe to the YouTube channel so you don't miss any of the content we do put out. Yeah, other ways you can support us is to subscribe to our Patreon program. The links will be in the video description or to head to our Red Bubble store and grab yourself some exclusive Ruin Hammer merchandise. We have plenty of designs honoring past legends of our club, current stars, as well as some great novelty prints reliving some memorable moments. The link to that store is also in our description. And just this week, you can get 30% off your order. So don't miss out. Get in now. Uh, well, that's it for another video, and we will see you guys on Wednesday night. Absolutely. Yeah.